Hello, welcome to part 2 of lecture 3. We will continue our discussion with density matrix formalism. In the last lecture, we defined a density operator rho cap as follows. Rho cap is equal to sum over j, pj, kth psi j, bra psi j. And it can be used to represent both pure and mixed states. For pure state, the classical probability pj is equal to 1. You just have only one state. So for, for pure state, the density operator is simply k psi bra psi, the outer product. And for mixed state, this is exactly the definition that I have written, but still let me write it once again. So for mixed state, we have rho cap is equal to pj psi j psi j. Okay. And there are some important properties of density operator which it must has to be uh, has to obey for the density matrix formalism to be consistent with quantum mechanics. Now I shall discuss the important properties uh, one by one which would be uh, of course relevant to us. In fact one property already we, I have discussed in the last class that that is this that the expectation value of any observable i can write it in terms of density operator uh, is this that this would be basically the trace of the product of the density operator and the observable basically the product of the uh, matrices corresponding to the density operator and the observable and you just need to take the trace of uh, the product of these two matrices that is property number one and second property is that this density operator must have to be Hermitian in fact it is a Hermitian rho is Hermitian and we can prove it and I will show you rho is Hermitian let us prove prove is simple let us say okay we'll start with the definition rho cap is equal to pj psi j psi j now if i uh, consider the matrix element suppose i consider the matrix element of the density operator or density matrix let me say the matrix element rho a m n in the orthonormal basis say phi then this would be phi m rho phi n so that is the density matrix element now if i put uh, right uh, if i use this use this definition of the density operator here so i have j pj phi m psi psi phi n and already uh, from our earlier class we have seen that this guy I can write it as this this one I can write this is nothing but the coefficient cm and this is the complex conjugate cn star uh, if you have forgotten just for your quick reference this state arbitrary k psi I can express it in the basis state phi as ci k phi i and from here I can write ci is equal to the scalar product phi i psi right so using this now because of the fact that now sum is sum is taken over all the classical probabilities so that is going to be equal to one so it will be left out with cm cn star this one I can also write as say cn cm star then again the product of that and I again take the complex conjugate this is nothing but rho n m star so from here because it is now quite evident that if you take the density matrix and you take the transpose of the uh, basically if you rows becomes columns column because uh, row and then you take the complex conjugate then you are going to get the original matrix again so that's why quite clearly 
it means that rho the density operator rho is hermitian okay so now let me go to the other properties now another important one is say the trace of rho trace of the density matrix is equal to 1 in fact uh, from the physical significance of density operator that we have discussed in the last class as you remember that the diagonal elements of the density matrix represents the probabilities so total probability has to be equal to 1 so from there it is very clear but let me now show it uh, mathematically as well that trace of rho density operator is equal to 1 so again writing the basic definition we can start with that so we have this all right now taking the orthonormal basis state as say phi k this is i am taking orthonormal basis orthonormal basis vectors okay let me take the right trace of rho that would be equal to sum over k phi k and this is density operator let me put the whole definition here that would be j p j psi j psi j uh, let me put actually it inside the bracket and i have here phi k so because this is stress that's what i can write now i can just do a little bit of manipulation here i can write this summation here j let me take this side the classical probability also let me take this way take it out then i take the sum over k inside so i have now phi k psi j psi j phi k all right now as you can see i can again use the completeness condition for my advantage so i write pj and i can because this is just a number i can uh, take it this side and if i do that i have here psi j and this summation over k i can take inside and i can write phi k uh, phi k here and this would be psi j now because of the completeness condition this is nothing but the identity so therefore i will be left out to it this is sum over j so this is sum over j p j psi j psi j and as you can see this is this is obviously total is equal to one so one interesting property of density operator is that the density operator rho is non-negative it is non-negative what it mean it means that for this actually imply that for any vector state vector say k v uh, we must have the expectation value of the density operator if we take that should always be greater than or equal to zero it effectively means that the eigenvalues are non-negative or in other words eigenvalues eigenvalues of the density operator rho are non-negative that means always positive it can never be negative it can be zero but it cannot be negative in fact uh, the proof is very simple so let me show you that so let us find out the expectation value of the density operator for this vector v and that i can write as again invoking the definition of the density operator let me write it as this so you have pj psi j psi j v and just let me take the classical probability here pj then i have v psi j psi j v now as you can see this guy and this guy they are complex conjugate to each other so therefore immediately i can write summation p j mod of the scalar product of say v j 
वी साइज ए ओके सो मोट स्क्वायर नाउ दिस इज हैज टू बी ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू जीरो सिंस द राइट हैंड साइड दिस साइड दिस साइड यू सी इज साम ऑफ नंबर्स दैट आर ऑलवेज पॉजिटिव और इट मे बी जीरो ओके दैट्स वाई दिस रिलेशन हैज टू बी ऑलवेज सेटिस्फाइड we have used the fact actually that the probability pj are real and non negative and that is always the case now the fact that rho is non negative is implies that as i said that eigen values of rho are non negative so density matrix is that's why it is also said that density matrix is semi positive definite so this is another way to put the property the density matrix is semi positive definite semi positive definite so don't go by the uh, you know it appears to be a technical word but it simply means that the eigen values of the density operator or the density matrix are always positive non negative it cannot be uh, negative all right now another thing is that one can always pick up any vector v and find out the expectation value of the operator rho and you are always going to with respect to this of uh, vector v state vector v if we find the expectation value then it is always going to be turn out to be greater than or equal to 0 for all vector state vector v in the hilbert space in fact one important in fact and interesting and very useful fact is that the probability the probability of finding let me just put it here finding the state uh, v in a measurement in a measurement is simply you have to find the expectation value of it now let us discuss uh, how to distinguish pure and mixed test uh, using density matrix formalism after that i will discuss some more interesting a couple of more interesting properties of the density matrix operator which are going to be very useful later on in our treatment of quantum entanglement how to distinguish a pure and mixed state well it is easy for a pure state for a pure state the density operator rho is simply this as we all know if i find out what is rho square then you see that for the f first row i will have this and for the other one i will have this now because psi is normalized so you are going to simply get again this one and this is nothing but rho this implies that for pure state rho square is equal to rho on the other hand we also know that from the property of density operator the trace of rho is equal to 1 this implies that trace of rho square is equal to 1 for pure state for pure state this is because rho square is equal to rho i am using this property uh, here okay now what about mixed state uh, for mixed state rho the density operator rho is i am not writing the operator sign any longer now so you can understand that i am talking about density operator so i have this sum over j p j psi j psi j and what about rho square so this i am to now talking about mixed state so what about rho square so i have two rows product of two rows so let me just say for the first row i have j for the second row let me invoke say l then i have here p j p l psi j psi j okay then psi l psi l all right now 
it is easy to see that this is definitely not equal to rho so rho square is not equal to rho for mixed state what about the trace of rho square let us see check that trace of rho square if i take an orthonormal basis to be say if i take my orthonormal basis to be say phi k this i take my orthonormal basis orthonormal basis in that basis state trace of rho square would be sum over k rho square already i have written here okay so i'm going to utilize it and so let me these two summation let me write as a one summation actually double summation is involved so but for certain notation i am using this to simplify uh, the calculation so i have here pz pl and i am going to take just one minute let me take this up here to make the space okay pz pl then i have to take trace so i have here phi k size a size a i'm just using this psi l psi l then phi k right i have to take the trace that way this is the way to take the trace and these are numbers so what i can do i can take it uh, this side again i am going to utilize my old trick so everything now i can write as a single this thing but three summations are involved k j l and i have here p j p l and if i take this side then i have here psi l phi k phi k psi j psi j psi l right this is easy to understand and now i can invoke because three summations are involved and i can invoke this ortho norm uh, uh, basically the completeness condition i can invoke that is i know that this relation is equal to one or identity so utilizing this i'll be just left out only only two summation that is summation over j and summation over l i have here p j p l and i have here psi l psi j this is one term the other term would be psi j psi l now as you can see these are the complex conjugate of each other so this thing i can therefore write as j l p j p l and this would be mod of psi l psi j whole square right so because this is a positive quantity and this has to be as you can easily see that this has to be less than or equal to uh, summation this is going to be equal to one if l is equal to zero so maximum value would be one here so therefore it has to be less than or equal to this j p j mod whole square right i think is it if when j is equal to l now this is sum over the probabilities classical probabilities that is equal to simply one so what you see ultimately you are getting we are we are working out trace of rho square for mixed state so this implies that trace of rho square for mixed state is less than one right less than one for mixed state for mixed state for pure state by the way uh, this is of course i should better write one only for mixed state it is going to be because when for mixed state l is equal to j uh, that is going to be equal to one trace of rho square b1 so we just get a way uh, using density matrix how to distinguish mixed state and pure state let me conclude for mixed state for mixed state i must have rho square is not equal to rho and if i find out trace of rho square that is always going to be less than one
By the way, trace of rho is equal to 1 for both pure and mixed state because that is the property of the density operator. And for pure state, for pure state, I have, I must have rho square is equal to rho and trace of rho square should be equal to 1. That's the way we can distinguish whether a state is pure or mixed. In fact, this particular parameter, trace of rho square is is called the purity uh, of the state uh, right trace of rho square trace of rho square is termed as purity of the state purity of the state before i go any further let me give you some examples to understand the properties and definitions that we have discussed so far in the context of density operator or density matrix. Consider an unpolarized electron beam. Consider an unpolarized electron beam where 50% of the electrons are in spin up state that is we represent it up state by say k0 and 50 percent of the electrons are in spin down state and spin down state is represented by say k1 so in this case the density operator of the electron beam would be written like this 50% probability that is the classical probability that is half so it is k0 bra 0 here for the second part we have half k1 bra 1 right that is the density operator and it is clearly a mixed state and it should remind you about the box problem that I have discussed uh, in the last uh, lecture part 1 of this lecture this i can further write in the matrix representation i can write it this k0 i can write as 1 0 and bra 0 would be 1 0 and here half k1 is 0 1 and this is the row vector for the bra 1 and then i have 1 0 0 0 plus half 0 0 0 1 so finally the density operator i have is half one zero zero one so what you should notice that this is a mixed state and i can prove it and also we can check whether the properties of the mixed state is uh, obeyed or not uh, the okay what i mean by that is say first of all if you calculate what is rho m square okay I, I'm already putting this suffix here just to uh, uh, take that this is a mixed state I'm talking about. In fact, if you find out what is rho m square, you will find it would be 1 by 4, 1, 0, 0, 1. Is if you take the uh, product, you will get it would be 1 by 4, 1, 0, 0, 1. Right, and it is clearly this is not equal to rho m. This is one of the things that the mixed state has to obey. And also, immediately you can see that trace of rho m square is equal to uh, 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4, that is half, and this is definitely less than, equal, less than 1, confirming that uh, this state is mixed state. Right, rho m is a mixed state. Also, you see that this particular state here there there is no you know uh, off diagonal elements that means no non-zero off diagonal elements all the off diagonal elements here are zero zero off diagonal elements uh, and it has equal diagonal elements so this kind of states are called maximally maximally mixed state okay so the definition of maximally mixed state is that where the off diagonal elements are zero and 
all the diagonal elements are of equal value right so uh, for example here we are having the of the uh, diagonal elements are half and half one half and one half okay let us consider another example consider and say ensemble where uh, say there's a, again a 50 percent of uh, the ensemble is 50 percent is in the state say k0 and 50 percent is in the state this time let us take a superposition state like this k0 plus k1 by root 2 so in this ensemble now i'm talking we are talking about an ensemble okay 50 percent whatever be the ensemble 50 percent is in the state k0 and 50 percent is in the state superposition state of k0 plus 1 divided by root 2 what about the corresponding density operator again it's a mixed state because this classical probability is here half k0 uh, bra 0 for the first part and for the second part i have half this is k0 plus 1 and in fact this is a direct product or tensor product so this is root 2 this bra 0 plus bra 1 and if i open it up then i will get a half k0 bra 0 plus 1 by 4 right and let me open it up the whole thing this would be k0 bra, bra 0 plus k0 uh, bra 1 plus k1 k0 plus k1 k1 and in matrix form you can easily write it and i leave it to you to show that you will get finally row would be equal to 3 by 4 1 by 4 uh, 1 by 4 1 by 4 now you see uh, trace of rows would be equal to 1 and here indeed that is so so this is a valid density matrix and also you see that the diagonal elements are positive here so it's a semi-positive definite and uh, this is because now you have a non-zero of diagonal elements are there this kind of states are called partially mixed these kind of states are called partially mixed and in fact you can check all the other properties you can calculate what about the row square and then you can find out the trace of row square you will find that the properties corresponding to mixed states is going to be obeyed by this density matrix now we are going to discuss about a very useful concept in density matrix formalism the so-called reduced density matrix assume that we have a composite system a plus b uh, but say we are not interested in the system b at all but we are interested in system a only the question is then how to extract properties of system a from a plus b so the question is how to extract properties of a from a plus b from the composite system this is uh, this uh, can be addressed by a prescription called reduced density matrix or reduced density operator so in this uh, by this prescription system a properties system a properties and it's an important point so let me write it system a properties can be obtained by obtained by taking partial trace over the system b partial trace over the system b as i go along it would be more clear to you uh, thereby we can represent the state of the system a by a density operator rho a so suppose the density operator of the composite system a plus b is rho a b then if i trace out b 
from that then i will be able to get the density operator for the system a so this is what is called reduced density matrix row a is the reduced density matrix because you are getting it from the composite uh, system density matrix row a b uh, let me give a more clearer explanation uh, of this partial trace issue to do that let us suppose that uh, the composite system is represented by uh, this way i will explain what it is so sub, uh, i am assuming that the system a and system b are separable so this part refers to the system a and this part refers to the system say b now if i take this is how I represent the state of the composite system. Now, if I trace out B, what I mean by tracing out B is I will take the trace over B only. So, part system A is not going to be affected by this trace operation. So, I will take that out and I will take the trace over B. So, this is what I will have. Now let us say, uh, le let me now focus on this particular uh, quantity here, uh, trace operation. Suppose we have a, say, we have a basis, so phi, in the Hilbert space of B, in the Hilbert space of B, then the trace operation uh, let me work out in uh, this in detail. The trace operation over B is going to give me, uh, you know how to take the trace operation by now. So I have here this phi i, then B1, B2 here, and this would be phi i, right? That's what the trace operation means. Basically, you are summing up the diagonal elements of the matrix that is what uh, we mean by tra taking trace so this is what uh, let me explain a little bit more in fact i can simplify it further so this would be equal to now because these are just numbers so i can play my old tricks again i can take it this side and if i take that uh, this side so b2 phi i here i have phi i b1 now uh, impose the or apply the so-called uh, completeness condition that means we know that this guy big uh, is equal to identity so therefore immediately you will get that this would be just the scalar product of b1 and b2 right this would be the scalar product of b1 and b2 so tracing out b from the composite system is going to result in as we have worked out we will get the scalar product of b1 and b2 and outer product a1 a2 so partial trace essentially averages out the effect of system b and extract the properties of system a to illustrate it let me discuss an example and to do that let us consider a state specified by this state vector and it's a two qubits uh, system uh, i'm considering so it is 0 0 plus 1 1 divided by root 2 so it, it basically shortened notation in if I write the full notation it would be direct product of 0 0 plus direct product of 1 1 divided by root 2 essentially the first uh, part here represents the refers to the first qubit and this one refers to the second qubit similarly here the same thing this is refers to first qubit and this refers to the second qubit this state uh, represents the fact that if the first qubit is in the state k0 
then the second qubit is automatically in the state k0 or if the first qubit is in k1 the second qubit is automatically in the state k1 okay that means if we make a measurement and find that the first qubit is in the k0 uh, which may refer to the ground state and the second qubit is also going to be found in the ground state and there is a 50 50 probability to have either to have either of this situation and this is an, an example of an entangled state we are going to this start discussing entanglement from the next uh, module that is next lecture we will start module 2 now if i write the density operator for this entangled state it is easy to write so density operator would be as per the usual definition this is what the density operator and from here we can quickly get this would be 0 0 0 0 uh, we have 0 0 1 1 plus 1 1 0 0 1 1 1 1 right now again here the first uh, 0 refers to the first qubit second 0 refers to the second qubit and so on so here say this is the first qubit this is the second qubit or first qubit second qubit like this okay if i uh, we are interested only in the first qubit then we have to take the partial trace over the second qubit to get the density of operator of the qubit one so this means that we have to trace out the second qubit from rho and if i if i do that then it is easy to we will just follow the prescription or the results that we have just worked out the first qubit is going to remain unaffected so just let us concentrate on the first term how i do it so i have to take the trace over the second part so this is what i'll have and let me now take this term so here i will have the first qubit remains unaffected and trace operation would be over the second one similarly from the third i have one zero and trace over one zero the last term last term will give me this now this trace operation we have already we know the result this is the outer product and because of the trace uh, trace you will get the scalar product of 0 0 which is obviously equal to 1 because of the normalization and this is going to give the scalar product of 0 1 and this is equal to 0 because of the orthogonality similarly here this would be the scalar product 1 0 this is also going to be 0 and this guy the scalar product will be 1 1 and this is going to give us simply 1 and because of this i will finally get row 1 is equal to a half 0 0 plus 1 1 and we have already seen this kind of a state and if i can write in the matrix form this would be half 1 0 0 1 right so it has off diagonal elements uh, are zero and diagonal elements are equal in magnitude and quite clearly this is a, a mixed state and this is a maximally mixed state maximally mixed state let me stop for now in this lecture we have learned this was the part two of the lecture uh, but overall in lecture three we have discussed the density matrix formalism which is going to be extremely useful it is one of the most important tool for quantum entanglement in the next lecture onwards we are going to start uh, quantum entanglement in fact uh, from next lecture onwards the module two will start uh, so that you understand uh, the concepts that i have discussed in module one i have uh, done some worked out examples in a problem solving session there i also discussed assignment zero problem solutions so see you in the next uh, lecture thank you